I'm finally back in familiar territory with the Division 2 as I bring you my first best-in-class weaponry guide for Title Update 6. This first installment of the series will feature the ever-popular assault rifles as these are the strongest weapons currently in the game and are used both in PvE and PvP. So let's get started. It's Lieutenant Buzz Lightbeer, and now that Title Update 6 has finally landed and is live, I felt it a great idea to cover the assault rifle category so that agents will have a good foundation for what weaponry is best to look to loot and equip for their builds. This ranking is based on the adjusted weapon damage ranges from Title Update 6 and takes into consideration the latest and most accurate information we have available. For each weapon, I will give you their previous Title Update 5 ranking as well as their new adjusted ranking, along with my general impressions of each. For my comparisons, I have chosen to use damage figures with the weaponry using the 20-round extended magazine, but no weapon talents or any additional mods. First up, in 14th place, is the FNFAL. And while I really do like this weapon, it simply can't hang with the other weapons in this category. While its base damage is not bad, it is really held back by the second slowest RPM in this category and a base magazine that is 10 rounds less than any other competitor. So the FAL with a full extended magazine can only carry 40 rounds versus 50 rounds for every other assault rifle minus the one round in the chamber. For reference, the FAL hasn't really changed much from TU-5, where it ranked in 13th place. In 13th place is the Military P416. And in case you didn't know, yes, there are two different variants of the P416 in the game. Both variants received a 5% reduction in base damage from TU-5 to TU-6, and the military variant sports a lower base damage figure than its bigger brother, the Custom variant. P416s are easy to handle, and are all around really decent weapons with SMG-like reload times, 50 round capacity, and above average rates of fire. TU-5 saw this variant of P416 in 4th place, so TU-6 has really knocked it down quite a bit. The TAR-21 comes in next in 12th place, just barely besting the military P416 with about a 1% better DPS ranking. The TAR-21 stays exactly where it was ranked in TU-5 at 12th place, despite being tied for the fastest RPM of any weapon in this category and receiving an impressive 8% base damage increase from TU-5 to TU-6. Reload speeds are low, clocking in at 2 seconds, and one would think that with that RPM, the weapon would have ranked higher. However, it is held back by the lowest base damage of any assault rifle, so despite its other superb statistics, it can still only manage 12th place. Next up is the HK G36, which received a 3% base damage increase for TU6, but is only capable of reaching 11th place, down two spots from its TU5 ranking. The G36 is really a well balanced rifle that ties the P416s for rate of fire at 750 rounds per minute. Reload speeds clock in at 2 seconds, and the base starting mag is the standard 30 rounds, 50 if you equip the extended magazine. Just besting the G36 for 10th place is the SCAR L, which received no changes from TU5 where it ranked 5th on this comparison. SCAR rifles feature the second slowest RPM in this category, but are offset by having high base damage figures. Reload speeds are fast at 2 seconds, and the weapon does feature a 30 round base starting magazine. The only statistics holding this weapon back from ranking higher is the slow RPM. In 9th place is the Carbine 7, which received a 7% base damage increase from TU5, where it ranked 10th on this comparison. The Carbine 7 features an above average rate of fire at 790 RPM and a 2.1 second reload time. 
Now this comparison does not take into consideration the specialty weapon talent for the Carbine 7 and that could affect sustained damage when procced. Now overall, I like the Carbine 7 for its rate of fire and in the game, it sounds incredible. Holding down 8th place and just besting the Carbine 7 by about 0.1% is the ACR. The ACR received a 3% damage increase from TU5 where it ranked 7th in this comparison. Now while the ACR rate of fire is low at just 650 RPM, tying it with the FAL, it relies on above average base damage to carry it in this comparison. Reload speeds are low at just 2 seconds and overall, ACRs are not a bad choice. Just not the best, but not bad. The Police M4, not to be confused with its semi-auto cousin, the lightweight M4, makes a huge jump from 11th in TU5 to 7th place in TU6 thanks to a 10% base weapon damage increase. Weapon characteristics include a high rate of fire at 850 RPM, 2.1 second reload times, and a 30 round base starting magazine. All the weapons from here to the top are actually tightly packed in terms of DPS, so the Police M4 could be a strong option. Just slightly outperforming the Police M4 and placing 6th in this ranking is the AUG, thanks to a slight 3% base damage increase from TU5 to TU6. The AUG actually placed 6th in the TU5 comparisons, so this weapon hasn't moved overall, but the base damage increase was needed to keep it competitive. The AUG features a below average rate of fire at just 680 RPM, blazing fast 1.8 second reload speeds, and is overall an easy weapon to handle. Now just for reference, the AUG outperformed the Police M4 by about 0.8% for DPS. Next up, and one could argue this is the coolest looking weapon in this comparison, is the FN F2000. Jumping 3 spots from 8th in TU5 to 5th in TU6 can be attributed to a 5% base damage increase and its rate of fire of 850 RPM. F2000s feature a class leading 1.8 second reload speed and 30 round base starting magazine as well as a very distinct look and sound when firing. The difference between the AUG and the F2000 came down to just 0.1% so you can see how closely packed these models truly are. In fourth, and just beating the F2000 by about half a percent are the AKs, which received no changes from their TU5 counterparts. AKs feature the lowest RPMs at just 600 rounds per minute and are tied for the slowest reload speed of any weapon in this category at 2.2 seconds. However, they are kept ultra competitive by their huge base damage numbers, which have kept the AKs almost exactly where they ranked in TU5, where they came in in third. Starting off the top 3 assault rifles for TU6 is the popular custom P416, which despite receiving a 5% base damage decrease from TU5 has only dropped one place from its previous second place ranking. The difference between this P416 and fourth place, the AKs, again came down to a 0.1% DPS difference in favor of the P416. An agent will like the 750 RPMs, 2 second reloads, and 30 round base starting magazines for their builds. From worst in TU5 to nearly first in TU6 is the FAMAS, and it makes a stratospheric rise to second on this rankings chart. Although it received no base damage changes from TU5, it finally received an extended magazine option for TU6, making it capable of carrying 50 rounds. Coupled with a class leading 900 rounds per minute and 1.9 second reload times, the FAMAS is a buzzsaw in TU6 as long as you can keep it on target. Now the difference between the custom P416 and the FAMAS was not close, as the FAMAS bested it by nearly 2.6% for DPS to firmly take second in this TU6 comparison.
In first place for TU-6 and the previous number one for TU-5 is the exotic Eagle Bearer Assault Rifle. Combining a decent fire rate of 750 rounds per minute, largest standard magazine available in this comparison at 60 rounds, and great base weapon damage all catapult the EB into the lead. Now I know that many players focus on the 15% base damage decrease from TU-5 to TU-6, but that isn't the entire story. You see, yes, the base damage was reduced by 15%. That much is accurate. But if you don't read the patch notes for TU-6, you won't understand that the EB is just as strong as it was in TU-5 if you are an accurate shot. So let me explain. In TU-5, the Eagle Barrel was clearly the best in class weapon in the game, and this was due to its exceptional base damage model in tandem with its static weapon talents of Eagle Strike and Tenacity. A player could land nothing but body shots and still inflict tremendous amounts of damage on target due to its high base damage model. Once the player landed a headshot kill, Tenacity would proc and boost the base damage by a further 35% for a timed period of 10 seconds. Once Tenacity was active, the Eagle Bearer could produce damage numbers twice that of most weapons in this category. For TU-6, this weapon had its overall base damage decreased by a flat 15%, bringing it more in line with other weapons in this category. But there is a catch. Tenacity was increased from a 35% weapon damage buff to a 50% weapon damage buff as long as the player can land a headshot kill. So as long as you can land consistent headshot kills, the EB is still as strong as it was in TU-5. Now in terms of raw damage output without tenacity proct, the EB can still outdistance the rest of the weaponry in this comparison and easily out DPS the second place for Moss by about 7%. However, once Tenacity hits and adds 50% more damage to its already first place DPS output, the EB truly shines and rewards the accurate shooter with laser beam focus and best in class damage. As always, I look forward to reading your thoughts about my best in class assault rifle comparison in the comment section below. What is your favorite assault rifle in the Division 2 and why? If you could take the time to rate the video with a huge thumbs up, it would be greatly appreciated. If you want even more Lieutenant Buzz Lightbeer and my continued coverage of the Division 2 in your lives, make sure to pound that sub button and configure and save to receive all notifications from my YouTube channel. You can also find me on Twitch with varied gaming streams and look for me on Twitter for all my latest thoughts concerning most things gaming related. Until my next video, this is Lieutenant Buzz Lightbeer, signing off.